What's up, bubs? It's Coco Dope back with another Dope Talk, a short podcast for hosting people with dope talents. Today we've got Armored Conqueror of Bad Games, Lord Mandalore. You want to introduce yourself, buddy? Yeah, hey, uh, I do reviews of games on YouTube, and that's about it. <laughs> that's that's all anyone needs to know me as. So, so what would what would you say like kind of sets your content apart there? Because there's a lot of different like game review channels out there. Uh, it might just be the games themselves. I was starting with weirder games, basically. And I just started taking requests from people because I know that large YouTube channels won't do that. And when you open up to that, you get a lot of unusual entries that people are like, oh, I want to see a video on that. So I think doing that was just probably how it started, I guess, rolling. I mean, I'm not PewDiePie or anything, but... Oh, yeah. But you did you did some like more mainstream stuff like Dead Space also. Um, yeah. But would you say you like uh, sticking with more, like I guess, obscure content on, on the regular with your videos? Uh, I think obscure content's funner to make, but I, I don't know. I like doing either. Like, I love Dead Space, and that's not, you know, a, a weird, obscure game. I think the best ones to do are ones that are weird bad. Yeah, no, and the way you, I think you, you talk about them, you make it very engaging and, and interesting, as opposed to, like, <laughs> look at this. It's funny because it exists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was another thing. Cause it's like, you would have these games like uh, Space Station 13 or Aurora 4X, and you would look up videos of them and it would be like, you know, bless their hearts, they're trying. But just like a one long 40 minute, like almost a let's play. And someone would just say like, you know, here's the game. It's really complicated. And uh, I don't know what this button does. So it's like you're not going to get production values for those kinds of games. You're going to really sit down and write something up and do nice editing. So it's like, you know what? I think I'll do that and just do it for really weird games. And I might have stuff like, you know, I'll hire someone out to do a weird rap or urban intro with a video about a really nerdy game because it's really funny to me just like something you wouldn't expect to see for a game like that what's what's cool is that like i see a lot of appreciation for the content despite it being like mixed in some sort of quality like like with with i for instance that or, or i guess uh i divine cybermancy <laughs> yeah, that's the first one i got introduced to on your channel and it's like a very weirdly made game with very like weird circumstances and, and how it was all put together, but but it doesn't seem like you you're making fun of it so much as like I have this weird love of what's going on with this developer situation. <laughs> yeah, it's like when some people see a bad game, they'll usually or not even bad. I wouldn't say I is bad. If they see something that's just odd about it, like you know this seems janky, they'll just kind of say like, oh, this is bad, and I'll see that and I'll say, why is this so bad, or why do you think people <laughs> think this is bad? It's like, oh, because Eyes is weird because people play it once and it's a really bad translation. But the story itself is also really surreal. And that's why people think that the writing is bad. So so would you say, like, you have a kind of a different personality from, like, the sort of persona you put on for your videos? Or is it, like... <laughs> oh, God, <brilliant>? no. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I, I think it's all me. Like, I'm, I'm more subdued, of course, because it's, you know, it's for a video. So I guess, if anything, it's probably more focused than I am. But it's like, I'm not playing a character. You know, something I really appreciate is, like, your delivery is very, like, sarcastic and also blasé, as, as they would call it. And it, it really brings out a certain kind of, like, uh, quirk with your writing, which is great. Because <laughs> you know, some of the lines you deliver, like, in, in this, like, very deadpan kind of monotone voice. People are going to get mad at me for this, but I don't write out scripts usually. Crazy, man. Well, there's earlier videos where you can tell, like, some I can't even watch. Like, I can't watch the EVE Online video anymore because <laughs> it would be, like, I didn't have time to properly have a work process. So you'd hear, like, the same line three times in a row. Like, it's like X, and then it's like X. It's like, X. it's like, mistakes like that, repetition. So it's like, if you have a script, you can look at that and say, oh, you know, that's not right. I should redo that. But what happened with me is that I was like, okay, I'm going to try and do this every two weeks. I don't have time to sit down and write out everything. So I'll outline a lot. Like if I'm playing a game, I'll write down things that are notable. And I'll basically just sit down and talk about it. I might edit it down to what I think is more important. But it's like I don't have a written script because I did a lot of writing in school. But what sounds good on paper is very different than what sounds good written aloud. So I figured if I just said how i felt about it it would come across as being more natural would you say not real yeah natural that's the word so it's like i was wanted to feel like you know i'm sitting down and just telling you like here's this game here's what i think about it you know this is pretty cool but you know what the fuck's happening here 
No, it really works. I mean, like uh, you've you've gotten me into a few different games because of that. Because it feels like sort of I think even even uh, Shammy put it down like this is just like you're having a one on one conversation with somebody like uh, about a very weird, obscure kind of experience. You know? Yeah, basically. <laughs> So what would you say got you into doing these videos? Uh, years ago, I did them. Well, I still do them for fun. But it was mainly like, uh, I'll, if there's a game that came out that was really bad, that was just like horrible, it would be more of like, oh, I'm just going to kind of make fun of the game. And I'm going to also warn people about it. Because I was kind of doing that with the Division video. That was, that's the transition one. There's a lot of people who could say this game's bad. Like there's always going to be a game that comes out that's bad and people are going to say it's bad. So may I'll find some games I think are just strange or something I think is underappreciated. It's like, but I'm going to put in the same amount of effort into the video like this is a brand new release that a ton of people are going to see. You know, I didn't have a huge viewer base then, but it was like, I'm still going to act like I do. It's hard to put into words. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm gonna act like three million people are gonna watch this video about this game that looks like Microsoft Excel. <laughs> it's I find a weird, a weird kind of humor in it because it's like these games. Some of them are like you wouldn't probably put that much effort into something like that, but then they ended up getting views, so it worked out in the end. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's cool that you're you're treating it like as something professional, despite the fact that you might have an audience. Because like everything kind of starts somewhere. Like you know, I've I've started doing these reviews just for shits and giggles, but it definitely I wanted to give it a more professional spin, regardless of that. A lot of them are introductory, like for the game, like Space Station Thirteen was one I did early on. So I was like, okay, if I keep doing videos, that's a really small community, and if the channel gets bigger, I don't want to flood them with new players because that's already a hard game. I would look around for like, okay, if I had heard of this game for the first time and I was looking around to find something about it, is it just going to be some guy, you know, talking to a microphone with a one long take of the game? Yeah, it's like, no, this is a cool game. I, I could do better than that. No, I, I'm not the best, but it's like when there's no competition for the game you're covering, it's like, well, I guess that makes it the best video on it. No, it's, it's cool when you have somebody who actually puts that sort of love into it, despite it. Because, like, I, I remember back in back in the day when YouTube was kind of like, I sound like an old person. Back when YouTube was first kind of, like, starting out, if you wanted to find something that you liked, it was a fucking, like, just mission. Like, if you found something that was even possibly related to an obscure sort of, like, game or movie or DVD, like, you couldn't find reviews, like, that were, that were nearly as accessible. So it's cool that you're going out of your way to kind of, like, give people more information on something that might not have, like like other coverage or or anybody nearly is interested in in kind of exposing what it's actually about yeah like the um war of the ring was the uh, lord of the rings rts game i covered and that was one that i think i bought because i had it confused with battle for middle earth when i bought it it was like <laughs> 10 years ago and i remember thinking that the game wasn't that good when i played it and then i was looking up for i was going to do another video on empire earth but that one has some technical issues i'm still working through but like I was looking at War of the Ring, I was like, oh yeah, I wonder what people said about this all this time later. And I went and looked it up, and there was nothing. I was like, oh, you know, there's something about a board game called War of the Ring, but it's like, this is kind of lost the time on YouTube. <laughs> so it's like, well, the fun thing about this is I can make the video on it, and you know, no one else has anything out on it. So it's like introducing people to this weird, kind of forgotten RTS game that got overshadowed by a big brother. And you get to have fun with that because, you know, you don't have people fighting you about, you know, War of the Ring was a masterpiece. <laughs> I don't, I, I wouldn't know myself. I'm not too familiar. I guess <laughs> it's not a good thing to be happy about when you're like, oh, you know, they're not going to fight on it. No one else played this. So, I mean, reviews are all very subjective, but you can have people who will debate endlessly over little aspects of a game like that. So when you do one that's more out of the way, it's just more fun. It's more like showing people something you found compared to a big argument like Battlefront 2 or something more relevant, I guess. Would you say you you try to make things a bit more objective or like subjective regarding the content you review? I mean, I try to be objective, but reviews are ultimately subjective. Like, if it's something performance-wise, when it's like, okay, you know, there's games that, on a technical level, this shading technique or whatever objectively looks worse than others coming out at the same time and it's running worse it's hard to be really objective when games are so interactive i guess it's like i don't know i see objectivity as more of a mathematical kind of thing compared to 
how I f think the controls are in a video game. Um, so I was going to ask you actually about kind of your your creative process and, and what gets you into doing like say a new a new game uh, review. Like, is is there something that draws you to particular game content? Yeah. Um, what I really like to see is games that are really colorful, have like a unique art style. Like I was one that was perfect for that. But at the same time, I think visuals really are a big thing because a video I really struggled with was one for Aurora 4X because that one looks like Microsoft Excel. It looks, it just looks like, I know people say, you know, uh, EVE Online is a spreadsheet game, but it's a literal spreadsheet game. And so I'm looking at that and I'm like, okay, how do I make this look good as in a YouTube video? You know, it's like, I don't want people staring at this white, grid screen and I don't know about compression and if the text will even show up. So I sat there for weeks trying to figure out how I would spice up the visuals for a game that looks terrible. <laughs> and I realized that, oh wait, I can't do that. <laughs> like it looks atrocious. There's there's nothing I can do that's gonna make this nicer. So I'm just gonna have to hope that people are interested enough in the game itself to sit through it. So what I did for that one was sort of a joke. I just put in the scene from the Expanse at the beginning, like, wow, look at this cool space combat. Then seven seconds in, it's like, oh no, here's the game. It looks like Excel. So I think visuals are a really big part. Compatibility is a big one too. Like if I, can, if I can't get the game running, I think that's a big issue. Empire Earth is one I'm still struggling with, like I mentioned before, because I can get the base game working, but there's an expansion that came with it that I cannot get running at all it just crashes so oh man yeah so visuals compatibility i guess the amount of coverage it's gotten to kind of plays into it like for some games i will look around and i'll see other videos people have put out on it if i think that someone's put out something really comprehensive on it or if our opinions are going to completely align and i'm not going to bring anything new then i might say ah, i'm not going to do that like, people have asked me a lot, you know, are you going to do a Deus Ex video? And it's like, ah, there's a lot of Deus Ex videos out there. It's like, I've been aiming for things that are to the wayside and it keeps working out for me. So what would you say is, like, your your process for, like, making the video, though? Like, Okay, so usually, because I would be doing it on a two-week cycle, I would usually, you know, start right after I've uploaded the last video on a Friday. Because the first week is usually the, the fun week. That's when you. Uh, that's when I get to play the game. If it's one I've played before, that makes it a lot easier. If it's one I haven't, then I'm gonna have to spend more time on it. But basically, I'll just sit down and I'll play the game. I'm usually not writing down notes. I'm usually not recording it. And then I'll play it a second time, and that's when I'll probably be recording stuff. That's when I'm jotting stuff down. And that's why I just make an outline about it. Like, there might be sometimes the first playthrough where I might record certain parts. Like, if it's a really long game, like a story-based game, there's an ending. It's like, yeah, I'll do that just so I can have the footage later on. I'm trying to think of the term for it. I want to be just playing the game like I'm a fucking human being. And not like, like you know, I need to make sure this shot's good. Like, oh, I need to line this up so it looks good for the video. It's like, no, I just want to try to get the experience as close as possible to how it was when I was just playing it. <laughs> and so the first week it's like okay you know i've got all the footage recorded i've got some stuff outlined and then that weekend of the first week that's when i'll start you know working the outline more and what points do i want to focus on and what do i want to kind of just ignore because i think that some videos will focus a lot on stuff that's not super important for the game but if it's something like oh i didn't like this person's hair color and they said this weird line if it's not really I don't know, outstanding, I just won't cover it. Because it's like, if I picked up on everything I liked or disliked about a game, the videos would be triple the length, and I'm, I actually <laughs> do try to keep the videos shorter. I know that there's the wave of people making the really long videos, like two hours, three hours, and all that, but I'm trying to keep them shorter. That's ridiculous. Yeah, no, it's, it's I mean, like, at least with the interview format, it's a little harder to keep things short, because I want to include as much content about the person, but, like, I've, yeah, I have oh, noticed, yeah. like, there, there's people like uh, Shammy, for instance, who, who make, like, almost hour-long videos by this point, and it's all, like, fancily edited, and I'm like, how do you, like, do this to yourself? Yeah, like, he spent months on that, and... <laughs> That was a huge project for him. And it's like, I've done, I haven't made a video that long yet, but it's like, 
and he uses way more visual effects and I'm just like burnt out when I do it. So I don't know how he did it, but you know, you have like Joseph Anderson's three hour critique of whatever games come out and it's like, Oh God, like, I don't know how they're doing it. They're, they're nuts. And that's probably them sitting in their rooms doing nothing but that, <laughs> but your editing is still stellar for, for like the, the amount of length that you put out. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm trying to keep them shorter. I really do. When people are saying like, ah, oh, you know, you know, I felt like you were you could have gone more into it. It's like, yeah, I probably could have, but I'm trying not to make them like a, a story analysis or a, if it's something I know it's gonna be contended with, like, like oh, you don't like it because it's deep. I'll say like, okay, I'll break down this mechanic and say why I don't think it works. But other than that, it's just like it's more for people who want to know more about a game. Like I won't spoil everything. Like the fear video, people are asking, you know, why didn't you mention Norton Mapes? He's so funny. Like, well, even if you get the whole story spoiled to you, if you still decide to pick up the game, I'm just going to let this weird character still just show up <laughs> that I never mentioned. So it's like, I'll intentionally leave things out like that so people can experience it for themselves, even if they go through main story spoilers. Is there any particular, like, snags in, in this process that you, like, don't like dealing with? I know hunting for clips can be kind of rough because I do try my best to match up the uh, the footage with what I'm saying which can require a bit of digging around. I've gotten better at like figuring out how to name clips to make that process easier. But the hunting around for them can be like something that I just have to skip over. If it's like, oh God, you know, I remember recording that five seconds of me opening a box to show for some section I'm talking about looting or whatever mechanic. It's like, okay, I've just got to get rid of it, stop thinking about it and do other stuff and I'll find it eventually. I guess audio recording is something that can kind of snag me at parts. I know a lot of people do that for reviews of like, oh, I didn't like that delivery or I sound too negative or that sounds too repetitive, which is why that plays into the script thing. So it's like, oh, this could sound great written down, but then I say it aloud and I don't like it or I don't like the delivery or I don't like how it's matched up with that clip. So I can be very meticulous about that stuff. Yeah, going back and forth, trying to make sure it all works together. Or, or really weird stuff too, like I might listen to a line I said like three times like, did I, did I, just, did I just sniff right there? <laughs> no. So it's like you have to get used to hearing your own voice, which that just takes time. Because it's like you'll hear something where it's like, oh, man, you know, my mouth sounds wet. It's like, well, that's normal. People don't most people don't think about that kind of stuff. But when you're sitting there editing like your own voice for a while, you start to pick up these little things that you do. And it's like, no, I don't want to, do I sound like that? Yeah, it's like, oh, I want to sound natural. But it's like, like, wait a minute. When I that sounds loud. Are my lips smacking really loud when I open my mouth? <laughs> Just like, you get these weird thoughts like that. It's like, oh, well, you know, I just have to, at some point, just have to ignore it. And if it's not really just a horrible sound, you know, it's probably fine. I must delete myself. <laughs> yeah, you don't think about stuff like that when you talk to people. But then when you start hearing your own voice for a long time every week, it's like, oh, God, you know, is that just the microphone or do I sound like that? Do you have any issues, I guess, dealing with um, maybe not your fans, but more and more so the, the gaming community or like any sort of uh, forum websites that, that talk about your videos? Do you mean like, is there a conspiracy after me? <laughs> conspiracy to kill Lord Mandalore, the boy who games? No, I, I'm just saying like, do you, would you say your experience, I guess, dealing with, with the, the, your audience is, is that typically positive for you? Yeah. I mean, I've never got, well, I've never gotten like emails that were like, you know, I hate you. Your review's awful. Well, I did fairly recently, but they're pretty funny. we will be like, you know, I hated that video, but can you do a video on this game? So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why? I mean, it's mostly positive, but I, I think this, I did a video on Star Citizen and that made me pretty much immune to that kind of thing. Because that game has a very, very devoted fan base. And I was saying, you know, this, this game has problems. So that was like, there was a lot going on. There was someone, it was like people trying to find out who I was and people sending spam mail and all this other stuff. And it was just, you can only just kind of laugh at it. I don't want to say I ignore it. Because it's like, you know, some people do have feedback buried in that kind of stuff. But it's like, it's something you just kind of, you learn to get along with. It just comes with doing it. It's like if anyone's going to start doing anything on YouTube or on the internet in general, you got to be able to be prepared for that kind of stuff. It's like I don't make anything particularly contentious, so I know that there are people who get hit by that stuff a lot more than I do. 
Yeah, but with gaming, it's just kind of a lot easier, I think, for people to get up in arms because the community can be very volatile sometimes. And it's it's like there are people who are diehard fans of certain things. They'll be like, if you don't like this, you're terrible. It's like, no, don't. I'm just trying to make fun content. Yeah, I noticed a lot in um in like free to play games like Planet Side, Star Citizen. Uh, what else did I do? Mech Warrior, kind of, but they're actually most of them really nice. I've noticed it's games where if you can put more money into it, usually you'll have more vocal defenders of it. I don't know if it's like a sunk cost fallacy thing, but it's like if someone says that they don't like your game, that you bought $200 in skins in or something, you might feel more compelled to go out and defend that compared to, you know, a $5 free to play game. Exactly. So I kind of I kind of figured this was an unavoidable topic because <laughs> it happens on your channel every now and then where you uh, say interact or collaborate more with like other content creators who are around. Right, right. Would you say that's something you, you really enjoy doing? Like collaborating? Yeah, like collaborating. Like, say, for instance, you had a uh, Shammy in your, I think, third Dead Space video. Or... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we basically just played the game. We didn't we didn't go full video collaborate. But if it's something where I think they could bring something more to the video, I guess. Like, I had, um, well, I'm actually working on one right now for an, an upcoming video. But if it's something where I think they could bring something I can't to a video... Like this guy I'm bringing in soon, he does his own comedy videos and he goes to conventions, but he also has a PlayStation 2. And I'm doing a game that was on PC and PS2. So it's like, okay, I don't have stuff to record a PS2 version of this game or do all this other stuff. But I know he can, so I can have him do his own part and I can plug his channel on it and he could do his thing. And I think it meshes well with what I do, so it's perfect. Or like with Shammy, it was like, well, Avery, I don't know what to call him on here. He's probably listening. <laughs> Fuck you, Avery. Anyways. <laughs> so when I brought him in, it was like, you know, uh, you should play this game. You know, it's a co-op game. You know, we'll have some fun with it. And he wasn't having a lot of fun with it until we got to the planet, which is like the halfway point of the game. And he was also, you know, working on the No Man's Sky video then. So he was really buried with stuff. But, you know, it was perfect for what we were doing. And I was like, you know, I like Avery, so he would be a perfect person to play a co-op game with because he just bought it compared to finding another YouTuber who I don't know or someone else where it wouldn't be like a natural playing a co-op game. Exactly. Like you need, you need kind of a friend to, to have that experience. And then there are, there are clips that you had from it that were just fucking hysterical because you guys have good chemistry. Yeah, exactly. Like there's so much I have recorded still that I never uploaded for that video, but like, <laughs> I know it's weird that I focus on that stuff, but it's like, you know, I have to have it be like, I'm really playing the video game. I'm not trying to get in a critic mind. I'm just sitting here playing the game. So it's like, I if Total Biscuit or whoever was like, do you want to record this game with me for your channel? It's like, probably not. It's like, not for a co-op game. For, cause it's like, I don't know you. And that's how you don't typically play co-op games with people like that. So it's like, I don't want to, I don't want this to feel like a professional thing. I just want to play the goddamn video game. Oh, it's kind of hard for me to say, like, I can't I can't find other content creators because that's, like, the focus of my channel. Yeah. <laughs> so I've gotten to meet a lot of cool people. Let's say, like, what's this show for? What do we do? I don't know, man. It's just fucking been doing this. It's talking to people. <laughs> but, no, I think I think finding other content creators is good, but it, it, it would be really weird if I, like, interviewed somebody and there, there was, like, no visual chemistry going on, you know, or I guess audible chemistry in that case, like... That would that would be so uncomfortable. The big thing for a lot of YouTubers and I guess other content creators in general is just constantly putting out new content. Um, mm -hmm. would, what would you say that's like an, an issue for you? It, it's an issue for me because you know I have a mainline job. It's like a side thing. It's, like, <laughs> it's just like people who usually do what I do will release less frequently, and they're also making pretty all right money on Patreon or something to supplement you know ad revenue. Since YouTube's going through all sorts of stuff right now. Oh, lots so of stuff. So it, it, it has meant from time to time, I got to be like, you know, oh, I want to go out and see whatever movie, but it's like, I've got to work on the video. So it's a scheduling thing, definitely. I did, well, I'm currently on break now. I don't know when this will come out, so maybe I won't be by then, but I have taken like two or so months off because when you do it every two weeks, like I was doing, even if it's a different game, there's still like time where you need to go like, okay, I'm just going to pull back from all of this for a while so I don't get trapped into a mindset of I have to get the next one out all the time. So I know that if I got into that mindset, the videos wouldn't be as good. So I know there are some people who will just try to get out as many videos as they can and they'll start missing stuff. And it's not like they're bad at what they're doing. 
it's just when you start having to do it so frequently, you're just going to start overlooking things. You're going to miss stuff, which I'm trying to avoid, but also stable release schedule, which can be an issue. So it's trying to find a balance, which you never feel quite balanced on. Yeah, and I, I think it can be very crazy to say, I need to keep doing this. And if, if it's it's no breaks, no nothing. And there are some crazy mother truckers, uh, I guess, I don't know. I'm kind of back and forth on how I curse on, I curse on here sometimes. And I'm like, ah. Yeah, uh, not this line. Yeah. So, but, okay, let me, let me reset. So there's some crazy motherfuckers out there who, um, they post something like what every two weeks every single week and they, they make new reviews like all the time and i guess there's some people who have that type a mindset where they can keep making stuff yeah but then like you have i think also creators like say shambi i keep bringing him up but you guys are friends That's fine. So kind of is is isn't there so he he makes videos every fucking now and then, but he has the means to do that because of Patreon, and that's that's fucking I love Patreon, aces to that platform for, for yeah, the fucking yeah, okay. platform for making that sweet revenue. And I think it's it's cool to support creators who necessarily can't make as much content, but put a lot of love into the videos they do. Because like I think I think when you have somebody who's smacking out a new video like every other week it, it can get a little monotonous in terms of how the videos are made or a little samey or a little like too too over the top for, for <laughs> my liking but um i guess i guess would you say in that case you're you're like trying to find a more steady schedule for making games or do you just like have a, a definite idea for like when you can stop like uh, i mean i i like the the um i guess bi-monthly twice a month i don't know what it is it's um every two weeks is good I might move it to every like two to three this upcoming year. It's like if I did have a Patreon or whatever, that kind of thing where, well, it's not even that. If I didn't have a mainline job to worry about, I'm sure I could, I could do more frequent uploads, but it wasn't a deal of like, you know, I don't want to be making the videos. It's like, I do. It's just time. You know, if I'm getting $5,000 a month to make, you know, two game reviews every month, it's like, if I still have the main job to worry about, it's not going to make a huge difference for output. So it's like, you know, there's a point where money isn't helping, or if it is, it's not going to be the same videos I'm making. So it's like, I could go out and I could hire an editor. I could hire someone to do the voiceover. But, you know, at a certain point, it stops being what people are paying for. You can see that in a lot of um, YouTube channels that become a bit more produced because of, like, the, the quality. And I hate saying that because it's like... Uh, oh no! Like when Angry Video Game Nerd went to HD from like his um his older camera. I don't know. I know what you mean though. It's like some it can start feeling a bit a little overproduced. Yeah, like you have you have kind of like uh, John Tron, for instance, who had very like a very down to earth kind of uh, persona with with his videos, and then he got a really big budget and everything went yeah. like way <laughs> overblown. And I'm like, this is cool. I like some of the stuff he's doing, but it, in the same sense, it lost a lot of the original personality. I think that made the videos like what they were back before he had that budget, you know? Yeah. Cause you get the, you get the feeling of like, Oh, you know, it was just some guy doing this, but now it's like, Oh God, you know, he had like a camera crew. He did all this. Yes. You know, he has like a whole team running it. <laughs> oh, there's like four, there's three sponsors in this video. It's like, wait, is this, is this a person or is this something being made? It's like a company by that point. And the same thing, like with the, the game, the game grunts. Like, like Game Grumps was two people on a couch, and then you suddenly have a whole fucking editing team, a whole fucking staff of people who are doing stuff, they're bringing in big name celebrities, and it's like, this this whole, I, they're, they're becoming like a corporation, basically, by this point. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to avoid that, it's like, it's like, I don't want to be hired, like, I might hire out people for, for silly stuff from time, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, time and now again, I don't know the phrase. Time, time to time? It's, yeah, time to time. I can't think of that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, so I'm, I might hire people from time to time for things, but it's like, I don't know if I would trust anyone to do the editing for me. It's like, I wouldn't trust, because I do so many little things with it, and it's like, I can't, I don't think what I do is easily delegated to people. Exactly. It's, it's hard to, like, trust someone else with something very specific. Yeah, exactly. Because people will say, you know, like, oh, if you could just hire an editor, you can upload more. It's like, yeah, I could, but I don't know if you'd be liking it. I don't know if it would be the same thing. I, I, I know I know Shammy does do the editor, though, I think, with, with his audio content, at least. Oh, uh, audio's fine, yeah. Yeah, David's a good editor. Yeah, like, I would hire him if I had the money to. But <laughs> like, audio editing, it's just like, yeah, he'll clean up your audio and make it sound really nice, but 
he's still the one who's, you know, writing the dialogue and editing the video. Exactly. You know, Sir Meow just comes in and he makes it sound excellent, what you've already made. Like, I love doing that. Like, hiring, like, technical people like that, that would be great. But it's like, for creative stuff, it's like... You can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, back to, like, dealing with, with your audience, and I don't want to say fans. Fans is, like, a weird kind of demeaning term. In yeah, some way. I, I like saying viewers. <laughs> viewers! Like hell yeah, that's actually really, really cute. Um, But viewers, I guess, dealing with that... Uh, with Discord, it's kind of been different recently because you can set up a platform for people to discuss your like videos and maybe interact yeah. with them. And uh, it's I guess you know you could do that with Reddit also, but that's that's not really such a curated process. Did you actually like make your own Discord, or was that like something a fan did or a viewer rather? <laughs> Long story. There's a fan one, and there's one I own. The one I own, it's I'm glad because it's not all about videos. It's more people getting together to play games. The uh, the one I have right now. Just last night, they were playing like an old version of Ace of Spades. They've been playing old Battlefront 2 or GoldenEye Source. It, it's more for people who like the videos and like those kinds of games. And then they'll come for like, you know, maybe I can find someone to play this old game that's dead. So I, I guess it's more, less of a cult of personality. Yeah, which I, I really appreciate. Because like the, the Discord that I set up for my, my stuff, which is like for my channel and for my art, it's not people who are there to fucking, you know, stroke my ego and do whatever. It's like people who just like... They have a common interest, but a lot of it's like, hey, we're here together and we're, we're enjoying different sorts of content and like promoting like old, old art artists and like whatever else. And that I think is, is what's what's great about Discord. You don't need to make it about like this weird rabid fan base. And I think it making right, yourself a bit right. more accessible can can actually help alleviate that <laughs> in some weird way. Because yeah. I've, I've noticed, at least with a lot of the older YouTubers, um, there's sort of a sensational... Uh, uh, what is it, what's the word for it? Sensational... Sen, some, some word... Basically, people like to sensationalize um, a lot of them and make them a bit yeah. more like like in, inaccessible and kind of above people. And that, well, that feels they, weird they make them. Me. They usually make themselves inaccessible. Yeah. And and that's that's I guess I'm glad to see more creators like like you and and Shammy and Brent Daniel and whoever else like I like that they make it easier to like get get in touch with them or like at least try to interact with their fans a bit more. I keep saying yeah. fans. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, I totally understand why they do that now. Cause it's like you know I have an email open for uh for like suggestions on projects and all that stuff. And boy, you know, when I release a video, those can those can spike up. And it's like when you have, God, I don't know, 10 times what I have or 20 times, it's like I can understand why some people close themselves off from that. But I guess I'm not the level where it's bothering me, I guess. Exactly. So it's like I know some people will just completely shut away from any fan interaction at all or disable video comments or just all of that. And I'm not, I don't agree with that. I, I guess I get it is what I'm saying. But would you say you appreciate having like stuff like Discord around that makes it easier to like? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hella, dude. Okay, so I guess that takes us to like the Q and A section, which is like I mean, we got a lot of questions, mm -hmm. <laughs> boy, yeah, that's fine. and and they're all kind of mixed mashed. I, I put a bunch of them together, and hopefully we can we can get through this pretty quick. <laughs> I'm sure there were I'm sure there were some repeats. Oh, there there. You know, I actually I, I had to I had to make a general category for one particular question, and I think you'll understand wow. why. <laughs> but okay. for I got a, I got a few of these ones also, but this is I guess the most pressing question for some people is uh, Small Bleed asks, what's the origin? of your night avatar oh that's a good i got some person just asked me that last night on discord who i didn't know okay so i know a new thing to do with youtubers is like i don't want to say john tron ripoffs I don't, i'm sure there's like a genre name for it but it's like you know you have the the disney version of yourself and you, you're all cool and you have your your big game shelf and i'm not like that <laughs> so i was like okay you know i i do like my privacy it's like, but I could, you know, I could get a picture made that looks kind of like my face. It's all smiling, but it's like, I don't want to do that. So I was just kind of sitting there thinking about it. You know, like, how do I have something that's, that's not like a really abstract, but not something that's like, I don't know. I don't want to say over, like over personalized. I don't know. I've seen some pictures that like, you see the, the YouTubers icon, then you see them and it's like, oh God, that wasn't what I was expecting at all. Yeah, it's like, it's like that, like you said, that Disney-fied version yeah, of like, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. person, which can be a little creepy. <laughs> yeah, but what's like, I could get a, I could get a really flattering Disney image drawn of me, and then someone will say like, "Oh man, he looks looks a little more goblin-like than I was expecting." 
So I was sitting there and I have a, um, oh, I was doing some course for school and I had this book and it had like these, um, I think it was like the Battle of Hastings or something on the cover. And it was like these French knights like overrunning these longbow men. And I was like, yeah, I'll just do that. <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll do a helmet. It doesn't have an expression on it. It doesn't have a, um, you know, you don't have any expectations. And it's like, it's kind of like that with me too. It's like, all right, it's a helmet. You know, I put this on. And it's like a barrier between me and, and internet land. It's like, yeah, there's a person behind that. And they're talking to you through kind of an internet barrier. But it's like, who are they? What do they do? It doesn't matter. I like I like that you're just kind of, the decision is, yeah, that's that's my thing now. <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I, I was going through all sorts of profile pictures that I just found were funny on Google Images. Like, there was some kid who turned his face into like a, a clownfish. And I was using that for a while. I was using a, a working Joe from Alien Isolation. Like, whatever I thought was funny that month, I would just put on as the picture. <laughs> Someone was like, you, you need to get something recognizable. And I was like, okay. I'll, I'll find something. Okay, so this is another one. This is, like, I think the most asked question. So everybody and their grandma oh basically asked, uh, do you have a favorite game? And and what, what particular genres like, oh. interest you? <laughs> yeah, there favorite you go. <laughs> favorite game. Oh. Man, I'd say my favorite game. This is... This is definitely not the best game I've played, but my favorite game is probably Morrowind. A lot of that's for n mainly nostalgia reasons. Like there's <laughs> there's a lot mechanically wrong with Morrowind, but you yeah. know I have memories. I have memories of playing it. I have memories of like showing my friends Morrowind and learning, and like modding Morrowind. And I was messing with the creation kit, and I was doing it was all Morrowind for a few years for me. So it's like that's probably my favorite game as far as just like. You know, what was the game you had the best time with, the best memories with? It's like, oh yeah, Morrowind. Yeah, that's that's definitely, I think, how I associate with games also. Is that if, if I yeah. play a game at a good point in my life, typically I'm going to fucking say, wow, this is a fantastic <laughs> yeah. game. Um, no, Morrowind's really funny, though. Uh, I was watching my boyfriend play it, and I, I never got into it myself. I, I'm a Skyrim boy, um, so that's kind of like <sighs> when I got into the series. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but... Um, the, the game, when I was watching him, he's just like, yeah, there's going to be a wizard that falls out of the sky right now. And it's just like, oh yeah. The one outside Satanine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he just fell out of the sky. <laughs> and, <he's> like, <laughs> and he fucking showed me, he's like, here's these scrolls that launched me 500 meters across the map. And I'm like, what yeah. the fuck is this game? And he proceeded to do that. And then he got eaten by mm. fishes in a lake he fell into. And I'm like, okay. This is yeah, I love it's like this. oh yeah, here's your scrolls with Syrian flight you know just fly halfway across <laughs> the map it's like you can break Morrowind but that's what makes it so fun yeah no it seems it seems like a fucking gen genuinely good experience uh, despite all of the the shortcomings yeah. of it being an old I mean game. the first time I played it was on Xbox so I couldn't have like housing mods and stuff but I wanted yeah. to live in a castle so I'd have to like use command spells and drag people outside and find people <laughs> I liked who wanted to live in the house and get a command spell on them like walk across the entire continent like refreshing the spell on them and dragging them into the house like <laughs> i was like oh that big that big uh dwemer centurion is cool that should be a guard at my house i guess i'll just walk it across the country <laughs> and then i didn't realize later on that they would sometimes follow you with uh fast travel from the salt striders that wasn't i wasn't happy when i found that out god there were some biblical like exodus out of egypt trek spring people across Morland with me <laughs> I thought they looked nice in the house or outside. Of it. <laughs> That's the brilliant part, though, is like, like when you're a lot younger, you have more time to to enjoy these sorts of games. And I think the older I get, yeah. the more busy I get. I can't really say, "Wow, I'm gonna I'm gonna sink five million hours into the new Morrowind, the new Skyrim, exactly, or whatever else. exactly." That's what makes a lot of titles inaccessible for me, honestly. Um, so I guess I guess with that being said, uh, th this is a weird person's name and i'm not sure if they meant to ask two questions so their username no surprisingly it's it's how has wikipedia inspired your work that's the oh, it's the name it. of of the but i guess, I guess you, <laughs> <laughs> right. which so how has wikipedia inspired your work asked what what game for whatever reason will you just not review oh my, like one that's like i'm never gonna review like you just looked at it and you're like fuck that <laughs> i mean i'm trying to think of one that i sort of some i took off just because of like a time sink issue like there are a lot of people saying like oh review you know final fantasy 14 and it's like oh that's an mmo we need to put tons of hours into it it's like that's not gonna fit for a video oh man 
So it's like most of them are that I've said I'm not going to do a video on are maybe for time or because of like, you know, like I said, I think they've been covered enough already. Oh, maybe Duke Nukem Forever. That I, <laughs> I played that game a while ago and like it's not the it's not even it's like a horrible, horrible game compared to what I've played. It's just so miserable. <laughs> oh no! Cause it's cause it's like oh you know it's, it's like a brown color scheme and it's really generic. It's just more generic than anything. Is that that's the like, new Duke, Duke, Duke Nukem title, right? That yeah, title, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the Gearbox one. Oh. Yeah, it's definitely not the most horrible or broken game I've played. It's just so generic. And people said like, oh, you're gonna do like a retrospective on Duke Nukem Forever. It's like God, no! I would be miserable the whole time. Like it's it's not bad enough to be funny. But it's it's not good enough to be fun. <laughs> it's it's like this twilight zone of bland that's like, oh man, like there's not even enough to it's like funny to say is bad. You just sit there and you endure it and it's like, oh that was okay. No, that wasn't okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I've I've been through a few things like that movie specifically where I'm like, I'm gonna love how bad this is and I'm like, I just I just don't feel alive clinically. There were, yeah, there was a few years ago when I was at a party and we were like like, haha, let's watch a bad movie for fun. Haha, Avatar The Last Airbender is on Netflix, the M. Night Shyamalan movie. Let's watch that. It'll be so bad. <laughs> and like 10 minutes in, no one's laughing. And we're just like looking at each other like, this is horrible. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> just like, it's you just reach a level where it's like, it's not even funny bad. It's just like, I want to go to sleep or leave. Take, take a good nap in from life. So, Zaya the fanboy has asked um have you given up on reviewing a game because it was so bad actually i guess that kind of fits in with with uh the other question but is there anything like that you got into that was particularly just like frustrating to work with yeah like, yeah there was one um i mean the empire earth thing is a technical thing i'm working on so that's not what i've given up with i was going to do a long while ago a video on amnesia machine for pigs yeah it was the um and I said, you yeah, how to make the review on it. I was like starting to record footage and going through it. And I said, you know what? I just don't like this. I just don't like this game. There's nothing I could do with this. And I just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> like I had stuff written out and I, I don't remember what scene it was. I think it was in the flashlight. It's just this thing where the, uh, the flashlight in it will always flicker when you see an enemy. And I was thinking of how it's basically a ghost detector in that game. Cause it starts whenever you see a pig. And so there was this pig glitched into the wall and I'm staring at it, and the flashlight's just flickering at it. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to make a video on this. <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't want to watch a video on this. So that might be the only one that fits the bill. So so Santerfed asked, uh, what game were you most surprised to see people request, and what game surprised you the most so far? P.S. Shout out to Viper. The world needs to know about T-H-O-D. I love you, Daddy. <laughs> what? Oh, thank you. More love for the thawed. Anyways, um... I think the game that surprised me request-wise was Aurora 4X, which is the game that looks like Microsoft Excel. It was it was really in demand. I thought I was going to be doing a video on the PC port of Vanquish that came out, but people wanted to see an Aurora video so badly. Like, every time I put out a new video, the Aurora crowd was getting louder and louder, and I was like, okay, I'll make an Aurora video. It's, like, <laughs> it's been a while since I played that. Isn't that the game that looks like, you know, Microsoft Access? And I yeah. open it up, and I'm like, it is the game that looks like Microsoft Access. <laughs> <laughs> which is why it bothered me because it's like when i'm trying to work on the video for it trying to make it look like a good video i'm just sitting there like racking my brain thinking like, why, why do people, people like want to see a video on this yeah why would you want to see a video on this <laughs> like, and then i realized it's like oh because no one else is gonna do it no <laughs> that's so sad and then and then the video did really well for me <laughs> there's some videos i've done on like first person shooter like monolith classic games that aren't as viewed as the aurora video so that just blows my mind. <laughs> but, I think it's because you're you're the only person willing, or not the only, but you're one of the only people willing to do that. And that's like a fault of me. <laughs> it's like looking at that, it's like, I shouldn't want to try and play that. But it's like, well, I kind of want to try and play that. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, man. So, so Mandalore is a turbo nerd, <laughs> as asked. Do you have any advice for someone wanting to start videos similar to yours? I have a few ideas, but writing a script and planning the structure slash flow of a video seems a little daunting to me. Okay, I'm gonna um, I'm actually making a video on how to make videos in a few months, Ooh. but I because I get that kind of question a lot. I'd say that 
because I don't know what his specific issues are. I'm just going to say in general. For your first video, make it on something that you're passionate about. It doesn't have to be good passionate. But <laughs> have, have strong, concrete feelings on whatever your first video is. You know, even if it's something that's been overdone to death, I think it's a good idea. Like, if you had a ball of a time, you love whatever Zelda game, make that your first video. If you had a game that you hated every second of, make that your first video. Because if you have something you have str really strong feelings about, I think that's easier to translate into a script. Like, if you're starting from nothing, learning how to do it, you've already done a lot of the base work yourself if you've probably been complaining about it to a friend or saying what you like to somebody. Then you already know how you feel about it compared to going to something blind, saying, you know, oh, I'm going to review this game I've never played before for my first video. Yeah, exactly. And that, that it's helps. Like, so have a base so you know how to, like, how to refine your ideas and put it into words so i think i think sure. what you're saying is it's it's fantastic to to be able to have not all of the learning process go out at once <laughs> exactly I think yeah I, when you get like excessive micromanagement of like details for for editing or like recording or like any sort of little thing like you're gonna you're gonna be making this video and it's gonna be like a year-long project that might not even be seen you know do it on something you feel something about exactly that's that, that a good first step because you've probably already done a lot of the back work yourself also props to making a video about making videos i think that stuff needs to get out more that's kind of like why i'm doing the podcast to help people have more of a base it's also very stupid because at the same time it's like well you're basically making your own competition on the website but it's exactly like, it's just like video tags are a huge thing that like a lot of people don't know how it works and it's I get so many repeat questions from people about stuff that should be explained by YouTube, but the Creator Academy is a mess. And so it's like, and people who usually do know are charging for services of like, you know, we get your video views and all that. Ew. So I think it's kind of intentionally kept, I guess, a bit under wraps. So it's like I, those services do work. Those ones who will say like, you know, we'll fix your tags and we'll get you a thousand extra views a week or something. It's like, yeah, those do work, but it works because people don't know how it works. <laughs> and I ended up figuring out a lot of how it worked on my own. And I talked to people who work inside YouTube stuff. And then I just got it all squared up. So it's like, I might as well tell other people, you know, what works for me so that maybe they can learn how to do it themselves. Because I think everyone can succeed on the website if you're willing to put the time into it. I really do. So, uh, Vasily Sokolov, which I think that's your first Russian name there. <laughs> Vasily, I don't know. Vasily. There you go. Do you, do you often get offered uh, for, for sponsorships or... or uh, okay, let me, let me say that again. Do you often get offered pay or sponsored... This guy is, is I guess, Russian, possibly. Okay, yeah. so what he's asking is, do you, do you get sponsorship offers for games often? And uh, if so, why would you refuse free money if you're not taking them? The answer is yes. I... <laughs> When I got more um, more subscribers, when the channel started getting bigger, promotional offers started coming in more and more from larger and larger companies that I was starting to recognize. Because at first it would just be like, you know, some indie game I'd never heard of saying, you know, we'll pay you. If you use our Kickstarter link, you'll get referral money or something like that. But I started getting companies I recognized. I would say, on average, I get offered to promote a thing or a game a about every three days on average, I get an email Dang. about it. That's, that's a yeah. lot. Yeah, like I'm looking right now and it's like, I see game, game, uh, microphone to promote. Game, <laughs> game, chair, chair, game. A chair? So, yeah, yeah, a lot of those chairs are, boy, they promote those at the wazoo. But it's like, I don't even use a camera. And those gaming chairs look fucking horrible. But no, <laughs> yeah, so I get those a lot. The reason I don't is it'll be very, very stupid for me to do that to start off with. Like if I'm making the videos around, you know, I'm just going to sit down naturally tell you how I think about the game. If I start promoting a thing that is not going to mesh well. No, because that takes away your opinion from it. Because if you say some shit about the game and they're trying to pay you to yeah. say nice stuff, like, you know. <laughs> it's like, if I promoted something, it would have to be something I like and probably not game related. You know, like, I, 
I like Papa Murphy's Take and Bake Pizza. If they <laughs> said, would you be willing to, to, to promote a pizza for 20 seconds? They'd say, yeah, probably. That got me through some times in college. No, you guys are cheap. But when it comes to a game, it's like a review copy would be fine, but they make it iffy. So I'll say like, we'll give you a review copy and then we'll give you a link to our website. And for every person who clicks on the link, you know, you get $5 or something if they buy the game. But you don't but know it's if they're like, going to pay you for that. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sure they will. The problem is if, if I'm relying off of, if I was doing it for like a main job and I'm relying off that, that's like, okay, how harsh am I going to be on this game if I get $5 every time someone buys it? It's like, then that would start creeping into a mentality of like, maybe I just won't mention that problem or, you know, I don't have to talk about that. Because, you know, every time someone tries this game, I get $5. Oh. <laughs> like, I'm not saying I would do that, but I'm saying that I don't even want the risk of that kind of thing creeping in. No, because that, that definitely compromises parts of you um, for what exactly. you're doing. And then it also feels really out of place when you start saying, by the way, this video is sponsored by this thing that does this thing. It's like, what? <laughs> this comes sponsored from? by this trash mobile game I would never fucking play. I love It's really I, good. 3,000 free gold if you sign up. Oh, boy. I may, I may actually make a lot of jokes about how I'd love to fucking have some stupid like company fucking sponsor my art just to like, do something stupid. <laughs> sponsored to you by wendy's it's like no i i would honestly love some kind of food sponsorship just because i think it'd be really funny something <laughs> completely out of left field like you know this video is sponsored by stouffer's macaroni and cheese <laughs> now on to my review of age of empires 2 <laughs> you're like knights eating stouffer's the entire time stouffer's lasagna like oh, that would be silly fucking pictures of garfield eating lasagna too uh fucking exactly perfect all right um so moving on destroyox has asked how do you find such funky fresh beats to use in your reviews and then it says oh great question um it was mainly just older games i played and most uh like when it comes to music licensing youtube really doesn't care about video game music i think that's the main part of it Oh. Some people will put in like, you know, uh, I don't know if you put in like 30 seconds of TI or something, they're going to zap you. But for the most part, it's like I might ask around or, you know, there's also I have a deal with my network for certain musics that I can license all this other stuff. So I find ways around it, basically. OK, so what are I guess so TJ six red has asked, uh, what are some pet peeves you have about YouTube reviews? Uh, please play the game if you're going to make a video on it. <laughs> That's probably the biggest <laughs> one. I, I'm starting to see that too often where people are just taking footage and they're not actually playing the games they're making like opinion pieces on. And it's very clear when you don't do that if you've played it. That's probably my biggest one. Like if people get stuff wrong and stuff, you know, that's fine. That just happens sometimes. No, I mean, people have opinions and, and necessarily not everyone's going to go in there and make the same amount of research based on something like like I think, like you said, reviews can be really subjective and what you take out of it doesn't necessarily need to be like the lore is 100 percent right or like your understanding of the mechanics and all that. But it's like if you're getting really basic stuff wrong where it's like, oh, you haven't played the game. And if I look, oh, your footage is taken from some other channel. And I don't think you recorded anything, then you know you're gonna get in trouble for that. Someone's gonna call you out. Like it's it's not like oh I'm gonna take a snippet for some other game I'm talking about. It's like my videos on uh, Mario and all my Mario footage isn't mine. It's like I'm gonna be very <laughs> suspect. No, that's really sketchy. Like to take someone else's content and then say, "Wow, this is mine now." But I guess you could say that also about like uh, music that's that's uh, actually copyrighted and stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Okay, so so Yuska or Yuska uh, ma asks Mandalore. It seems like you're incredibly content with life and honest to who you are. If that's true, could you give me some life advice? Life advice in general? Just just if you're a happy guy, what, what would you say makes you a happy guy? Uh, do what makes you happy. There you go. I, <laughs> I don't know how to put it. <laughs> if you have a really bad job, that's a good way of figuring out what you want to be doing. It's like if, you know, oh God, I've worked in retail. Like, when you're in a terrible job, 
and you're sitting there and it's like, I would rather be doing X that I would rather be doing. Try to make that your job. Yeah. And then also don't, don't bury yourself with that kind of work. Cause I know, I know it can be really, you know, good to have that kind of money, but like when you, when you make that your 100% focus, like you can get really burnt out fast. It's the same thing with making videos all the time is like, if you make that, your the thing you do, you're going to hate doing it eventually. <laughs> So this is my favorite personal one. So Sid Gand has asked, what the fuck is up with your channel trailer? What is up with my channel trailer? I'm not changing it <laughs> if that's what he's asking. That is, that's staying. I don't, it, it, it carries the spirit of what I do. That's all I'm going to say There's about this... it. I'm not changing oh, is it. it. Is there like a German person screaming? Or like... It's a German person singing a song about Schnappy the Crocodile. Schnee schna Schnappy. It's like a children's. It's like a, yeah. I, I remember schnappy. that shit actually. That, that was from a long time ago, at least when I when I saw that. Yeah, it, it just feels right. I'm not going to change it. I guess. I guess on that note, that ends the Q and A section. And I, I guess in in this case, is there anything you would you would want to say to like say your viewership or like you know the people who who support your work most? Yeah. Um. If you want to do what I do, go ahead and try for it. It's like a lot of people will say that, um, that, you know, the website's too saturated and, uh, you know, I, I can't do it. I'd just be doing the same thing. It's like, no, there are, yeah, there's a lot more people making stuff, but there's a hell of a lot more people watching it. It's like there is a lot less overlap than you think there is. I guarantee it's, it. It's kind of weird also when you take numbers and you turn that into like these are people specifically or like rather you turn people into numbers and, and you don't realize the actual logistics behind like what your work might be reaching out to despite the, that kind of like short reach. Because like even just like 10 views, that's fucking crazy. You know? <laughs> it's somebody who sat down and watched your shit. If someone says like, oh, you know, I don't make another video, I only got 50 views. Try public speaking in a room of 50 people, and that's gonna look a lot bigger. Like, that's how I think of it. It's when someone says, like, oh, I only got like 200 views. It's like, imagine being on stage talking about that to 200 people. That's not gonna look very small. There's just a lot of people on YouTube. And, and the scale of YouTube is also, I think, I think there's an issue where people like to compare themselves to larger channels on like a massive scale, where you have like people with millions of uh, subscribers and viewers and stuff, but then you have like somebody who's small and, and their work might still be as impactful, they just haven't reached those sorts of audiences yet. Yeah, like Creel. If anyone's listening, please, please watch Creel too. K-R-E-A-L, he's great. Get Creel on the show. Uh, I mean, I... I can think of Creel off the top of my head. I did a video in December where I, I shouted out a, a bunch of smaller people I liked. So I guess the best thing you could do for to support small people you like is just interact with whatever they're doing. You know, if you like their video, say you liked it. Say what you enjoy about their work. I think that's a big motivator for a lot of people. Like if someone's getting, you know, if you only get 200 views per video, but if every single person left feedback, you know, that would be, that would feel huge. Exactly. No, and, and, and like, like you're saying, even on a small scale, it's super nice to get that kind of support because that's like just encouraging for more content. Like if you like somebody and, and, and you want to see them do more shit, just, just try to send some positive vibe. Maybe it'll like help push them in a good direction, you know? Yeah. Or you exactly. could be a dick and be like, your content sucks. <laughs> or tell them why they're garbage and they need to get <laughs> I mean, feedback that, helps. It's also motivating. I, well, that can be motivating for some people. Not just, everybody. Don't don't be a dick. Don't don't send them into a hole. Just be like, yeah, you know, you could you could fix. That. Maybe buy a better microphone. <laughs> okay, so with that. I guess that ends the podcast, and I really appreciate having Mr. Mandalore on. He, he actually had a lot of great stuff to say, and uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that you guys reached this point if you did. <laughs> Believe in yourself, everybody. Wow, you've made it this far. Hey, so I know it's I've been a little absent recently, but I have plans on bringing stuff back. I'm going to do a whole little update video, just basically uh, kind of getting you guys updated on my situation and why it's been a little crazy to, you know, even focus on YouTube. But good news is I'm recording a lot of episodes right now and that all should be up like I'm, I'm planning on doing a bi-monthly sort of deal where like you get two videos two dope talks specifically 
and then uh, a few extra things in between, little little tidbits like some BTDs or maybe some some uh, other update videos, tutorials, who knows. Uh, but it's all in the works right now, and I hope to uh, surprise you. I guess I just wanted to give a quick thanks for for all of the support I've seen in the content. We're almost at three. I mean, we're over three K subs by this point. What what the fuck <laughs> that happened? So thank you guys. It's been cool. Um, I have a Discord that we we do cool stuff on there. We we throw around uh, content, we share stuff, we're really nice, we have a great friendly community and some cool guidelines and some super stellar mods. And uh, on top of that, I also have a Patreon. You can go there and uh, go check it out and support me. <laughs> I don't know. Shout out to Tater Tot and Lucky, you guys are awesome. I figured I'd, I'd try to do some more standard stuff with YouTube since I'm a little dumb baby boy when it comes to figuring this stuff out. So thanks for putting up with me, uh, and I hope you enjoy whatever. Uh, thanks for watching the vid, and hope to have more up soon. <sighs>